Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Christina and I sew historical clothing. I have a project I need to work on today and I thought it would be fun to bring you along with me. It's time for the 18th century man shirt I made last year to get some ruffles added. I also have a bunch of lady friends who are working on 18th century writing habit ensembles and the shirts that go under those have the same kind of ruffles on them as men's shirts do. The one I made for myself has plenty of ruffles peeking out at the neck and wrists. I figured this would be a good video for both gentlemen and ladies to enjoy. Men's shirts are an essential undergarment, but if you are a gentleman of rank or means in the 18th century, your shirt may be adorned with ruffles down the front to show off your wealth and status. In the 18th and 19th centuries, it was popular for ladies to ride or travel in a garment known as a riding habit, the top of which is modeled after menswear. Therefore, a garment similar to a man's shirt is worn beneath it. This is called a habit shirt. The pattern I used for my habit shirt is the J.P. Ryan 18th Century Riding Habit Shirt. The pattern I used for the men's shirt I made is the Larkin and Smith the 18th Century Shirt. Having made both these garments, I can attest to them being very similar in construction. While making my habit shirt a few years ago, I encountered a small problem. The method described in the pattern for attaching the ruffles did not quite make sense to me, so I did some research on 18th century methods for attaching ruffles. I used several sources such as Rural Pennsylvania Clothing and Fitting and Proper, as well as zooming in on images from originals on the internet. The Larkin and Smith shirt manual also describes the method I will share with you today, though I had not read it until after my habit shirt ruffles were complete, but I've added it to my pile of corroborating evidence. Here is an image of a shirt from the Met I zoomed in on. What we are seeing here is that the shirt and ruffle are finished separately. Then the ruffle is attached to the shirt using whipped gathers. Oh, that's my favorite stitch, and it's actually easier than modern methods. I will be showing you how I do this stitch today. Let's look at what it looks like on my finished habit shirt. See these little bumps? each one sewn down to the shirt. Don't let it intimidate you. There's actually a trick to doing this pretty clean and fast. See the ruffles on the cuffs as well? The cuff links are a common method of attaching shirt cuffs and allow the ruffles to fan out prettily down the wrist. Because the ruffles are attached to the finished garment, they make each construction step more straightforward. You can even wait to attach them till the main construction is done. You only see the wrists and neck while it's worn, so this is where your fancy work shows. <laughs> I wear mine with a cravat tied around my neck, finished with a feminine bow. To prepare the ruffle I will be attaching to the shirt today, we need a piece of fine linen about two times the length of the slit. Two inches wide is good for a finished ruffle, so my linen strip is about two and a half inches wide to account for turning in the raw edges on each side. Your linen should be cut exactly on green by pulling a thread and cutting down the channel created by that missing thread. Both short ends should be gently rounded on one long side. They should be a fabric that is finer than your shirt. I only wish I could get my hands on linen finer than this, but no luck so far, so I am using the same fabric as the shirt. Here are my sewing supplies. A hard pin cushion that I made um, that I keep tiny brass pins in and also my needles. These scissors are based on historical sewing scissors. I think they're so pretty. Uh, links will be in the description. This linen thread is the finest and whitest that I could find. Also, I am using the bottom of a beeswax candle to run my linen thread through in order to strengthen it. I actually caught my boyfriend using my candle for this purpose the other day and realized he is brilliant. We will start by doing a rolled hem on the outer edge of the ruffle, the long edge with the rounded ends. Extant shirts have a hem that measures 1 16th of an inch on their ruffles. Sounds impossible? It can be done and this is how. Begin by finger pressing down an eighth of an inch hem. Run your fingernail along the fold and you will notice that it stays nicely in place. 
anchor your thread just below the start of the fold and pick up a tiny chunk from the fold directly above it. Pull your thread taut and take a couple stitches in the same place to secure. Now, after you pick up a couple threads from just below the fold, angle your needle up and grab a couple threads from the top of the fold about a quarter inch away. Pull your thread all the way through. Now the secret is to take the next stitch exactly below where your needle just exited and exactly below where the raw edge of the fabric is touching. Take up a couple threads on your needle and as it exits, angle your needle up and grab a couple threads from the top of the fold about a quarter inch away again. Don't pull tight yet. Do this a few more times taking gentle stitches. Now pause your stitching and tug gently on the thread that is sewn through the fabric. You will notice the fold obediently laying down exactly in half at each stitch point you took. You can help the process by finger pressing the fold completely flat with your nail. Continue this process. I recommend tying off every couple inches, but not cutting your thread, just in case the thread breaks. Sometimes they tug a little too hard and snap. <laughs> you don't want to have to redo very much if this happens. Take your time and continue this method for the rest of the outer edge. Leave the inner straight edge raw for now. Now we are ready to prepare the long straight edge of the ruffle. Mark the centers of the shirt slit and ruffle edge. There is approximately a two to one ratio of ruffle to shirt slit, but we need a little extra at the bottom to go around that bottom curve in the slit. So I'm gonna save an extra inch out of the center of the ruffle on each side. You can see where I've put two pins Pretend the section doesn't exist while well, you find the halves, then the quarter marks of both sides of the shirt slit and the ruffle. You can check that the ruffle pins are about twice as far apart as the corresponding pins on the shirt slit. Because it's easy to get this turned around, let's first make sure we get the positioning correct in our heads. Place the right side of the ruffle against the wrong edge of the shirt with the raw edge of the ruffle edge to edge with the finished slit. This is because once we have sewn this seam, we will fold it back toward the front of the shirt like a hinge and the ruffle will lay flat against the front of the shirt and we want the finished pretty front of the rolled hem to be what shows. Now for the fun part, <laughs> prep for sewing in a similar way as before. Finger press down an eighth of an inch and get your needle ready. Anchor your thread right below the fold but this time we are going to take the needle directly back through the fabric and instead of pulling it all the way through, leave your needle in there and wrap the tip around the top edge of the fold and plunge it into a spot at the bottom of the fold about a quarter inch away. But don't stop there. Instead of pulling your needle through, wrap it around the edge again. Do this several times until your needle is loaded up with little linen bumps and then finally pull it all the way through. Notice the edge folding in on itself and creating a tiny hem while at the same time gathering the fabric into little bumps. Continue this process until you have reached that first pin, which is marking a quarter of the ruffle. There will be a corresponding pin on the shirt slit marking the quarter. Pin the ruffle and slit edge together at the quarter mark and at the very top starting point. Gently tug on the gathering thread to get the edges to match up. You can pin this section as needed to keep it in place. Now here's where we switch gears, or more accurately, needles. Set your needle to the side and prepare a second needle with thread. Secure it at the very top or beginning of the section. Now take a stitch through each little bump right where it touches the finished edge of the slit. With each stitch, catch a few threads of the top of the bump and a few threads of the top of the finished edge that it's touching. This is a whip stitch that we are using to attach these layers, hence the term whipped gathers. Continue until you've sewn through each bump and have reached the pin marking the end of this section. I like to tie off my thread with a knot here. Then I tie off the gathering thread in a knot as well, but I don't cut either thread. Now everything is fully secured and we are ready to go on to the next quarter section. So let's do just that. 
When you get to the bottom of the slit, go ahead and incorporate the extra inch we set aside into the gathers at the very bottom so that it's just a touch more full down there. Take it one section at a time with gathers, then whipping, and you'll be done in no time. When you are finished, you'll want to massage the seam a bit to get it to hinge out nicely. Hold the seam flat and run your nail along it. You will be able to see through it and see the threads holding each bump on. We want to help those now face the opposite way that we sewed them on. Fold the ruffle flat onto the shirt front and gently massage the bumps in place while pushing the edge where they are attached nice and flat so they seem to spring out from the edge of the slit. <laughs> Lovely. This slit is pretty deep and you may want to secure it closed a bit better if you like to wear your waistcoat scandalously unbuttoned. A historically accurate option is to use a shirt buckle to close the slit. This example is also shown in the Larkin and Smith shirt manual, and fortunately this beautiful painting is in the public domain, so I can show you here what it looks like. This is a similar shirt buckle I have, and it gives you another option for adding a little something extra to the front of the shirt. This same gathering method we used on the slit can also be used to apply ruffles to the wrists, and it looks especially lovely on ladies' habit shirts with a pair of smart cufflinks. Hey, that's all for today. Thank you for joining me for this quick little project. Links will be in the description and I hope you have a wonderful day. Go make something glorious.